today is February 21st, I think. I always have to check, y'all. I never know what day. Okay. So today is February 21st. I'm back at the dermatologist's office and um, I'm kind of talking pretty low because I don't want them to hear me sitting here recording and stuff. But um, I'm about to have a chat with the doctor about my biopsy results. So we'll see what it says. Um, my hair is looking pretty full today because it's dirty and wash day is needed. Um, but this is where I got the biopsy. Like I mentioned last time, I got some hair here. Now, y'all, it's like, again, when I pull it up, you can still see that it's really sparse. But there is some very, very fine hairs right here. I'm trying to, like, separate it. <laughs> you can't really see it. Again, the camera and the lighting kind of helps me out. I do have, there's like an overhead light right here, but yeah, this side. You know, I'm super grateful for shrinkage. So I'm in front today. Again, it looks different literally every day, y'all. And that's, it. that's kind of a part of the frustration because some days it seems like it makes progress and then other days it's just kind of like wait i thought this was looking better so honestly it's different every day it looks different every day um so i don't know we'll see what she says <sighs> okay i apologize about the lighting um the sun is like really bright so i have my sunshade up and um Again, I'm holding the phone because it's just way easier to do this in the car this way. So I just got out of the appointment and um, I'm a little bit worked up. So if I'm like red, y'all know, like if I'm hot, cold, excited, angry, <laughs> all of those things, I get really, really, really splotchy. Um, but anyways, let me calm down. <sighs> let me calm it down. Okay. All right. So basically... She said that looking at the biopsy, it seems like it could be the beginning stages of, I think, androgenic alopecia, um, but she wasn't necessarily certain. She said that the, uh, I'm not sure what they're called, the person who looked at the scalp biopsy sample um, said that they didn't see any inflammation, so everything looks really good, and... It didn't really look like there was anything wrong per se, right? It could be the beginning stages of like very, very little uh, androgenic alopecia. Um, so she said it, she didn't mention FFA or anything like that. No CCCA, nothing like that. Um, but yeah, she says sometimes like because she like, she will press for an answer. Um, they'll like make sure they give her something. So perhaps that's why they said androgenic alopecia like it's like is it that or not like don't play okay like what Okay, I'm back. So, let me regroup. The treatments, the treatments that she, she mentioned. I'm not surprised by any of these treatments. Um, unfortunately, again, like, I, I put off going for so long, y'all. Because, not that I, like, know it all, because I obviously do not. Um, but when you, when you have, like, resources that are basically, uh, you know, people in the same exact situation and they are going through the same things and you kind of hear like what was told to them and whatnot you kind of already know what to expect more than likely um so not surprised that she mentioned some of the things that she mentioned first things first um she's like she wanted to start me on like mendox mendoxidil tablet the pill um or the topical version uh like a five percent or something like that so, 
when I started this whole thing, this whole process of going through dermatologists, I knew that, you know how I mentioned, like, um, I wasn't sure what I'd be willing to do. I'm not necessarily against Rogaine or anything like that. Medoxidil is Rogaine. Um, the main concern I have with it, um, is the fact that it is a sort of kind of blood pressure medicine, right? Another one, right? And you must stay on it or you will lose the progress that you have. Um, it will cause like a shedding, hair fall. Sometimes it even causes hair fall to begin with because I think it tries to put your hair all in the same growth cycle. So you could increase shedding initially with treatment and then it starts to correct itself months down the line. I think you can actually purchase it in store, but I haven't done that. And I chose to do rosemary oil mixed in, you know, like my shampoos and stuff like that over the past several years um, on and off just to see if I could get some results. And I did. Rosemary oil is said to be very, very similar um, in regards to like how the hair follicles respond. So they're kind of like almost neck and neck for a lot of people. So I decided to try rosemary oil and again, I did get some results and however they didn't stick around and I did mention that to her and she said yeah you know that is true and she said however it's true that with any form of hair treatment the results basically won't stick around if you stop the treatment so it's like not gonna matter like what you do um, so that sucks <laughs> when I told her that I was a little bit hesitant uh, adding any more medication to my list of things that I have in rotation right now. <laughs> um, she was like, what's the concern about adding something else? And I'm like, okay. <sighs> the same thing happened at the gynecologist when I was hesitant to try the, you know, progesterone cream and whatnot. I'm just like, it is not an easy choice for me. It might be easy for other people to just be like, okay, sure. Just let me just add something else to the soup. But for me, I'm like, look, I'm done cooking. Okay. I don't want to add anything else to this daggone pot. <laughs> Many times the doctors are looking at me like, why don't you want to just try this? And it's like, okay, I'm not saying no. I'm saying I need to know what exactly I'm getting myself into. Because sometimes y'all don't be telling us everything, okay? And sometimes things be making stuff worse. Not all the time, but sometimes it be making things way worse or adding new issues to, you know, the whole situation, okay? And nobody has time for that. I also find it kind of bizarre that... Um, whenever I bring up supplements and, you know, food and stuff like that or whatever, particularly supplements, the doctors literally do not want to touch it with a 10 foot pole. Like they like, do not care what you're taking. They only care about any prescriptions. Um, so, you know, I'm taking, I'm trying black seed oil very little bit because again, I am on blood pressure medicine and supposedly it can interact. Um, so that's new and I'm taking some vitamin D and, um, some CoQ10 and stuff like that and they they do not care the only thing that they care about was if I was taking biotin it was like the only thing and I'm like well it's in my multivitamin but you know not and it, there's a decent amount of biotin in there I think like 4,000 percent or something like that maybe even more um but that's the only thing that they cared about nothing else and I just find it kind of bizarre because obviously what you're eating can definitely have an impact um as to how your body is responding to certain things but they did not care um, and as far as the blood pressure medicine, the metapolol, she was like, well, I would have seen it on the biopsy if that was causing it. And I'm like, okay, I'm not exactly sure what you would see. Um, so I don't know what that's about. The other option that she mentioned is a different blood pressure medicine. So like getting off of the metapolol and trying this other one, spiral black. I don't know. I don't know what this is. I'm not sure what this says. Um, spiral lacto something. <laughs> Hopefully I can like write it out. Um, but it's a blood pressure medicine and it can also be used to treat hair loss. So that could be an option that I talk to my cardiologist about when I go in to get my blood pressure evaluated and whatnot. She also mentioned Viviscal, which I've mentioned to you all. Um, I said that my mom had some success with Viviscal over the years. She uses it um, on and off here and there. But with Viviscal, you have to stay on it as well um, because if you stop, your hair will shed out more than likely again. Um, maybe not right away, but over the course of a couple months, you're going to kind of end up in the same situation that you were to start. Um, I believe Nutrafol is also very similar. So if you're on that, make sure you're staying on it 
Um, and if you want to get off of it, just expect some shedding. Hopefully it doesn't happen, but it's highly likely that it's going to happen. Matter of fact, there was a girl here on YouTube that reached out to Nutrafol and asked, you know, hey, you know, is this normal? Because she had stopped the supplement. I think it was too expensive for her or something. And her hair started to fall out. And she called them and they told her, yes, you have to stay on there forever. Now, I don't think that they tell you that on the, bo the bottle or anything like that. So that is not okay. And the last one was platelet rich plasma injections, um, which is where they take, I think she said like a little bit of your blood or something like that. And then they kind of mix it up and then re-inject it into your scalp and try to like stimulate some growth. 80% of people have positive results and you know, 20% don't. It's very expensive, like 800 bucks or something like that. Every single time you go in and you got to go in quite often in the beginning and then, you know, you're kind of on like a maintenance thing. So those were my options met like that she recommended, right? I did ask her, I said, you know, basically kind of like, why am I responding to the DHT thing? Now, I don't know what my levels are. I don't know what my hormone levels are, but obviously there's something to this. Any of the things that I have brought up or brought to her attention, um, it's just kind of dismissed. And it's almost like there's this, um, like this protocol, like we're going to put a bandaid on the situation instead of figuring out exactly what the cause is. And she was like, well, maybe some of the growth is from the steroid. I don't know. I mean, maybe, but I was only on that for like, I was supposed to be on it for 14 days. I was on it for 10 and, um, I don't know. I think my gut's telling me to see what happens with what I'm doing right now. She was actually very, very shocked at how much progress I made. And she was like, yeah, when I did your biopsy, you didn't have this growth here. And I was like, I know, like, it's crazy. Like, I don't know, something is going well. So what I decided to do right now is um, I, I'm going to come back here in three months to see where I'm at. So hopefully, I'm hoping y'all that it just continues to make progress. And who knows, with pumpkin seed oil, if it is working for me, I might have to use it forever. Um, and if I stop, you know, who knows, I might relapse into the same situation. I do feel more comfortable, though, using something like that versus, you know, a drug, right? And maybe that's just me. I don't know. Thank you, Jesus, for no FFA or CCCA or anything like that. Thank you, Jesus, for no inflammation. Um, yeah, I'm actually shocked that I don't have any inflammation because I'm inflamed everywhere else. Okay. <clears throat> but thank you, Jesus, for no inflammation up there. And maybe it's just literally estrogen dropping and raising and falling and all the nonsense that's happening on the monthly. Okay. In my case, every 15 days, it seemed like, uh, um, but I'm super grateful that there's no scarring. Or anything like that and I know I mentioned before in the last video or something like that with Micah when he was he was in the car with me and I said I might just go back to the taper cut that's like a real thought y'all because that just cuts out a whole lot of nonsense it doesn't cut out you know the front but it just cuts out a lot of time and everything like that and I've low-key been rocking the look of a taper cut for like the past three years wearing hairstyles like this <laughs> so it's like what what am I doing I'm a, I can continue to do stuff like this but this is what I've literally been doing versions of this um you know sometimes it's up sometimes i put the back down and i try to like change it up so i don't get like you know any traction issues or anything like that but i've been looking like i've been rocking a tapered cut for the past three years or so anyway so i might need to just do that again <laughs> i saw that several of you have also recently gotten scalp biopsies i hope everything comes back okay in that you find some sort of solution, some sort of path to begin um, to help rectify your hair loss situation as well. Prayer works, y'all. Okay, seriously, let's continue to just stay prayerful and stay trusting. I know it is hard sometimes to continue to stay positive. Again, I'm speaking to myself because it is a struggle, okay? I know I come on here and I'm trying to be positive, but it is a daily struggle, okay? I apologize if this is too long. There's kind of a lot to cover, but thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you are everything.
you are everything and you are in control of all of our lives so i hope to talk to you all soon and i hope you have a blessed day and see you later take care